here we are. So it is Wednesday. This is the day that I go with the dogs to wave um, at lunchtime around 1130 at Willard. So if you would like to stop by. We are on chapter eight. And if you recall, Dorothy has been playing ball with Toby. Dorothy and I played outside most days after that. My favorite game, though, was running down the hallway. Sometimes Mona played with me. Sometimes Patsy did. Every now and then, Eddie joined in. It was always sensational. Fran never played. But sometimes she watched. I wish she'd take part. She never smelled happy. And a good game of chase would probably make things better. But one day, Fran came to find me where I was having a quick snooze on the couch next to Dorothy. She clipped a leash on my collar and told me to come with her. I heard come, so I hopped off the couch and followed Fran. But she didn't know how to do training right. She did not give me a treat or even pet. She took me to a room with a desk in it. On the desk was one of those plastic boxes that Patsy sometimes stared at. Fran sat down in a chair and waited. I waited too. It was dull. I sniffed along the carpet, but nothing smelled like food. I checked a wastebasket until um, under the desk, but Fran made a disapproving grunt and pushed me away with her foot. It only smelled like paper anyway. Paper is not much fun to chew, so I was very happy when Patsy and Mona walked into the office in a short time later. They understood playing much better than Fran did, except they seemed to have forgotten because the three of them just stood there and looked at each other and said words. Lots of words. Humans like to do this as much as they like to stare at boxes with pictures on them. The dog is not working out, Fran said firmly. Mona gasped. Toby? I looked up hopefully and wagged harder. She said my name. Playing? Soon? Treats? Maybe? But she didn't even look at me. He tears up and down the hall like... This is a racetrack, Fran said. Yesterday I saw him running around the hospice ward. The people there need peace and quiet and comfort, not a steeplechase. Eddie and I grabbed him right away, Mona said. Fran was frowning. That's not the point. Whatever they were talking about, it didn't seem to involve me. Or a ball to throw. But when there's nothing to play with, a dog can always improvise. Fran had let my leash drop, and I wandered away from her, jumped on a small couch in a corner of the room. I think he's calming down a lot, Mona said nervously. And all the residents love him. I see them brighten up when he walks into a room. Did you know that Dorothy goes outside to throw the ball for him nearly every day? I couldn't get her engaged in anything before this. All she wanted was to watch television. She hardly talked to anyone. And now she's outside daily because of Toby. That hardly makes up for the disruption, Fran said. Can you get him off my couch, please? There were two soft cushions on the couch. I grabbed at one and sank my teeth into it deeply. It was just the right size to shake hard. I shook. Stitches ripped. <sighs> Toby, no, Mona wailed. She tried to grab the cushion from my hand. Excellent, tug. I love tug. I jumped down, braced my feet in the carpet, and did my best to resist as Mona tried to drag the cushion from my mouth. I wouldn't let her. I was going to win. But then Mona very unfairly worked her fingers in my mouth to force my jaws open and snatch the pillow from me. Mona threw the cushion back on the couch, sat on the floor, and picked me up, holding me on her lap. I could feel that she was worried, but I couldn't see why. We'd play another game soon. The point is, he's not trainable. I gave this every chance. He's a young beagle, and he's got way too much energy. He's not safe. He's going to knock someone over and make them trip the way he tears around the halls. No, it's not working out, and there's nothing left to try. Take an ad out in the paper, online, whatever. We have to get rid of this dog. Mona gasped as if something hurt her. She held me tightly to her chest. It was not very comfortable, but I could tell she needed me, so I didn't struggle. I did scrum so I could lick her. Get rid of Toby? You can't. You just can't. She said my name. I love Mona. I licked harder. Mona, bring Toby and come with me. Mona and Patsy went back in a little room that smelled like Patsy. Mona sat down on the floor and cuddled me close. We can't just get rid of him, she wailed. A few tears stripped from her face. He hasn't done anything wrong. I know he hasn't, Patsy said. She sounded sad, too. I'd go over and look her face soon enough. That would help. 
Fran does have a point, though, Mona. We thought he was a calm, easygoing puppy when we got him. But the truth is, he wasn't well. Well, thank goodness we figured that out and helped him. But now, well, he's a beagle. And beagles love to run. If we could just take him home, you know we can't. No pets. Apartment rule. I know, but Fran's not right about the training. Toby's really smart. He p picks things up so quickly. Except stay or lie still, Patsy said gently. My ears dropped at the sounds of those words. We aren't doing training now, are we? If I just had a little more time, I could teach him. Please, Mom, he's such a good dog. I wagged. I like being a good dog. Patsy sighed. I'll do what I can, Mona, but don't get your hopes up. I can drag my feet a little about putting out an ad, but Fran's the boss here. If she says Toby has to go, there's nothing you or I can do. The next morning, when I went to see Dorothy, Patsy and Mona were already there. Of course I'll try, I heard Dorothy say. Anything for Toby. I raced up to Dorothy, who was sitting in her wheelchair, but we didn't go outside. I watched, puzzled, as Patsy helped Dorothy move out of the wheelchair and sit on the couch. I looked all over for the ball. I didn't see it anywhere. Mona patted the couch next to Dorothy. Up here, Toby. I jumped up and sniffed at Dorothy's lap. Was the ball here? Toby, sit, Mona told me. I sighed and sat. Oh, well. Down, Mona said. I reluctantly slid on my belly right next to Dorothy. Training was not anywhere near as fun as chasing the ball. Now lie still, Toby. Lie still. She backed up a few steps. It seemed as if she's holding her breath. Dorothy's soft, gentle hand touched my head and stroked all the way down my back. I wagged once, then I hopped up and stuck my whole head under one of the cushions. Maybe the ball was here. Since Dorothy seemed to have forgotten it, I figured it was my job to remind her. Toby, no, Mona said. I pulled my head out from under the cushion and looked to her in surprise. No? Why am I being told no? She told me to sit and lie down again. I did it. Why did training meeting have to do a mean I have to do so many things so many times. Lie still, Toby, Mona told me. I looked up at her hopefully. When were we going to play? Okay. We won't make him do it for too long, just a few seconds more. Suddenly I had an idea. My ears twitched with the excitement of it. Maybe the ball was lost. Maybe that's why we weren't playing with it. All I had to do was bring Dorothy another toy. I leaped off the couch and raced out of the room. Next to my bed was the basket full of toys. I dug through it and found what I liked a lot, a braided rope with a ring at one end. With that in my teeth, I trotted back to the TV room. Dorothy was still on the couch. Mona was sitting on it, too, looking discouraged. I jumped up and laid the braided rope in Dorothy's lap. I'd solved the problem. Now we could play. That would definitely cheer Toby up. Oh, Toby, Dorothy up. That would cheer Dorothy up. Oh, Toby, Mona groaned. I played lie still with quite a few of my friends that day. Mona seemed to have forgotten the rules of the game, though, because I never got any treats. I forgave her. I loved her very much. When she put me in my bed before she left that night, she kissed the top of my head, and I felt so much love from her that my tail beat against my soft blankets. Toby, you have to do better, she whispered to me. You've got to learn this. I loved hearing Mona say my name. I licked her nose. I couldn't wait to play more tomorrow. So I forgot to show you the picture of him tearing up the couch. Oh, Toby. So things can get discouraging with training. It's been pretty difficult training Ori just at home and not around other people. Um, so that's why I'm headed out today. Can't wait to see you guys. Bye.